Hey there and welcome to this new tutorial on the Moose for DCS World Framework. In this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to set up the interactive debugging method which is using the Eclipse LDT environment. This method has been used and has been worked on for the past months but I think now the time is ready to actually explain what you need to set up and what you need to do to actually do this debugging yourself. The debugging facility is currently still in alpha mode of release 2.3 um, and when you download the repository then you'll find in the Moose development directory of the Moose repository a debugger folder and in the debugger folder you will find two files, two Lua files and one readme. If you open the readme you'll see an explanatory text that explain you what you need to do on the mission scripting.lua uh, modification but when you open this this is already done for you so you could basically just copy this here and I will walk you now into how to set it up interactively using the yeah using my PC and then you can see what I did to configure the system right so in this window here I am at the installation folder of the DCS world simulator and you find here that I've copied the debugger file that you'll find in your moose repository into this directory. You can copy it or you can create a soft link that points directly to the file in your Moose repository. The next step is you will need to modify your scripts directory in your DCS world installation folder. So if you go to scripts here and I show you the missing scripting.lua excuse me just let me open notepad very quickly yeah and you see that the contents of the mission scripting file is different from the one that you'll find installed by default. These are the important lines that have been added and this will actually load to debugger. The first would be to add on the default packaged path the Lua socket and then question mark dot Lua which is basically going to you know load um, the Lua socket which is residing here by default right so that's that then the next one is it's going to create a connection so it will require the debugger.lua and this will load your uh, debugger.lua file from the root directory of your DCS world installation folder which is here right and then this one this statement which is residing in the debugger.lua this statement in it connection will actually start connecting your mission to the debugger and basically what will happen is your LDT environment here will actually connect towards the local host so that will be IP number 127.0.0.1 port 10,000 DCS server and these parameters you need to configure in your LDT that I will explain you in a minute you're connecting on a Windows machine that's all by default and this directory will become important to be configured this directory would be the directory where your Moose missions are running in. So you need to ensure that this path is correctly set up. It doesn't need to be the complete path but it should be the root path from where all your missions are stored within. Because this will, you know, there's a challenge that is that when you run your mission the debugger will need to find the files of your mission file, right? So using this path you specify where the debugger will need to look for those files and we'll find them. We'll get to that a bit later uh, when we actually go into a debugger demonstration. Right, so I'm going to leave this text here because we're going to refer to it in a minute. Let's go to the LDT environment, the Lua Development Tools environment. On the right upper corner you see these two icons. You see a Lua environment and a debug environment. When you click on the bug you see the screen changing. And you'll see something different now. You see a debug window. You see a couple of tapped a window with tabs in here like variables, expressions, breakpoints. And here would be the code that would be loaded when the debugger is running. And what we now need to do is we need to set up a debugger connection from your LDT towards your running mission file. Let me explain you how to do that. Setting up the debugger is very easy. You do run, debug configurations, select Lua attach to application, click here the new launch configuration, the plus, 
and then you give the configuration a name like DCS missions, right? Debug, for example. And then now you need to give your IDE key, which needs to be the exact name here, DCS server. So just copy this or type it, DCS server. Just type here 1000 and click local resolution and you're done. Apply, close. The next step now that needs to be done is you need to write your mission file in a bit of a different way that will load your mission file dynamically so that you can actually set breakpoints on your file in the LDT Eclipse editor and your logic will stop exactly at the break breakpoint specified. Let me show you this. So here I got a mission that I modified to actually also debug or run within a normal mission. Um, there's a special thing you need to do. You actually need to create two additional lines, actually two additional triggers uh, on top of the ones that you already know. And this is a suggestion how, you know, how I would do this. Um, because when you have a mission and you want to debug, you need to explain to DCS that you really want to debug the mission and not just run it, right? So you need to tell it in a way. And how you tell it is basically you need to dynamically load your mission file instead of statically. What does static and dynamic means? Static means that your mission file is embedded in your MIS file, right? So when you publish your mission on the internet or you upload it on a folder or whatever, a OneDrive, then your Lua file here will be added in your MIS file, which is basically a zip file, right? But when you load it dynamically, you want to tell your mission file or your, your, your you want to tell DCS, right? That it will load the mission dynamically from a directory which is specified here. In my case it's going to be github moves underscore missions tat task dispatching blah 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 and then tat 130 air to ground dynamic spawning and detection of lower. So there's a macro added that is moves include moves dot include which is automatically added um, in the moves framework and takes two parameters. The first parameter is between double quotes the directory and that's just going to be the directory you know that you have um, where your mission file is residing excuse me where your mission file is residing in but instead of backslash just uh, write slashes and the last character needs to be a slash as well and then the second parameter of this function would be your mission file your Lua file including the Lua extension okay so this example here, you know, TAD 130, air to ground, dynamic spawning, blah, 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 is uh, explaining this, is showing this. And now you see here a condition, flag is true, 999. That comes from this trigger here. So at mission start, I'm doing a debug trigger, and I'm setting flag off at the moment. Flag off would mean that in the next one, this condition static, you know, would run if flag 999 is false or off, then this would be run. If I set it on, by the way, however, yeah, so I do flag, um, where is it? Flag on, right? Then this would be skipped and this would be run because here now I have a condition flag is true 999 and it would include this directory here, this file here from the directory specified. So how do you debug now? The first tip that I suggest you do is when you click on the bug window arrow down, you do organize favorites, and then you do add, and you click this one, DCS missions debug. The result of that is when you click again, you'll see this one appearing, DCS missions debug. When you select this, you'll see in the debug window here that, you know, a couple of new lines appearing, you know, DCS missions debug. And basically what's happening here is there's a listener here. There's a process running in LDT that's going to listen on the port 127001, right? The IP number of your local host address if the debugger.lua in your DCS mission environment 
is running and the debugger.lua that's included in your mission environment will connect to the LDT environment and will allow to have breakpoints being set etc which is a very advanced system. So let me explain you now very quickly an interactive debug session. So the first thing I think you want to do is you want to ensure that your debugger will halt somewhere, will stop somewhere while executing. And a good example of this would be this one here. So when I do here, you know, right click the line number, so go on the line number, and if you don't have the line number, you can enable it. And I will explain you later how to do that. So go on the line number and then do toggle toggle breakpoint. You can also double click that line number. You can actually go into the gray area here and do the same. So there's a gray area here, right? So go in there and toggle breakpoint. So now when you go back to the debugger window and you do your breakpoints list here, you'll see a breakpoint being added. Yeah, and I'm going to delete the other lines because they are of previous debugging sessions that I had. So at line number 26, your logic will halt when your program is running. Always check that this is running and that this red box here is, is saying, you know, there's a process running, but you can terminate the debugging session by pressing this. So this is executing and listening. So let's debug. I quickly go to Game Master. And now you see something interesting. The logic really doesn't start, but I stopped it on this I stopped on this line here. For security reasons, I have flagged each line here because actually the logic is stopping at line 27, not 26. So each line here is a piece of code, right? So it stopped at new. Now you see a green line here appearing, new. And now I can go and walk the code. So what I do now is you go to run and you have these options here. F5 is step into, F6 is step over. So I can go in and do F6. I will execute this line, new command center, etc. But step over the logic. It will be executed, but it just, you know, um, has skipped all the details of the debugging session. However, now the line is halting at add scoring. So when I go in here and I press F5, I am at the method add scoring of the mission object. And I can actually go and inspect some variables. For example, what does scoring have? Well, scoring, there's a self variable here, and I can click that open on the arrow, and I can inspect what's under self. All of these are all functions, but like these are values. Current is idle, start date is idle, right? Menu coalition is one, etc., etc. You can go and inspect a lot of things here, and this function will return self. So I go back to F6. And now all of this is being filled up. And I can go in and see what does mission contain now. Well, mission contain all of that structure. It's an object, right? That has been created. Same with headquarters. Same with scoring. Got those. Let's do, let's create FAC set. Right. So FAC set is here. So the variables tab here will actually list all of the local variables and global variables that are known that have been created during your debugging session in the file that you have active. And actually it will show every variable that it knows in what we call the stack of the memory that has been created during mission execution. While here in the expressions tab, and let me delete those, because these are from a previous debugging session that I had. But now I can go and write here an expression that will be evaluated. For example, FAC set. I can just drag that here. And it should be displayed normally. Please display. <laughs> okay, why not? I don't understand. FAC 
set right. And that's a table of 34 variables. And here you go. Here are the, here are the contents, right? Um, I can do something more. I can do, um, yeah, and that's because of the object oriented. So in the inherited class, there is a, a variable called set. So I can do fac dot set dot set. So I do here fac set dot set. This will, this will show what is under the set variable of fac set. And that's going to be a string, right? It's going to be a, an element with the key fac, um, what is it? Um, hash mark or whatever. And then zero, zero, 001. Yeah. So debugging really allows you to do some fantastic things. Let me show you this. There's a variable called underscore G, right? Well, you can go and inspect underscore G. What is under all of those? All of the global variables, right? But there's a lot more. There's some things here that you can go in and use. GC info, IO, math, all of these. And this is basically reflecting your running, um, yeah, your running mission, your running mission environment. All of it. These are your globals. Okay? So that's one to remember. Um, another one is self. So when I go in here and I do, for example, in this one here and I press a five new. Well, the resource is out of sync. That's probably because I waited too long. Yeah, okay. It's because of those. Hey, it's not perfect, the debugger. Sometimes you get strange errors. Uh, let me see if I can refresh it. Yeah, now it's loaded. Good. So now when I do F5, yeah, it will actually be in the function, but I already pressed a few things. So now I can go and debug what does self contain here. So I can go and list self. And why on earth isn't he just putting that in here? I don't get it. That's strange. You should be able to do it here. No. On the top. Yeah, that works. Okay. So here we have those, right? So this allows you really to go and inspect your variables and create your variable lists and everything. And just, you know, find your bugs. That's what it really helps you to do. So I hope you enjoy this video and um, I hope it's going to help you to create your missions and uh, see you later. Yeah. Bye bye. Post any question you have, please, on the um, Discord channel, which we have now, which is here, right? Lou's channel, Discord, right? Lua, whatever, GitHub. Um, and you can also post your questions on the channel. Just post them here on the YouTube channel where, where this will be stored, this video. So thank you for watching and bye bye.